a very good morning to all and welcome to the third class of gentle science so we started with the chapter living and non living things and we discussed about the features of living things and today let's discuss some other unique features of living things so we know that things on earth can be classified as living and non living things right some things are living and some things are non living so let's learn about some other features of living things produce young ones give out waste products respond to stimuli and have a life span so that is what we are going to discuss today so the first one is produce young ones so this is one of the most important criteria of being a living thing that is it produce young ones of same kind so this is one of the most important criteria of being a living thing that is all living things reproduce okay so all living things reproduce their own kind so there are animals like birds frogs insects they lay eggs they produce young ones by laying eggs so here you can see the picture here you can see the picture chicks hatch from eggs so some animals lay eggs for producing their young ones then there are animals such as tiger lion cow so all these animals give birth to young ones so all these animals give birth to young ones then what about plants a new plant grow from a seed so most plants bear fruits and fruits have seeds so most plants bear fruits with seeds and the seeds give rise to a new plant so all living things reproduce so that is the most important criteria for being a living thing then what about a non living thing will it reproduce their own kind will it reproduce same thing no so if you keep aside for example if you keep aside a book for 5 years will it produce a new book no so only living things can reproduce this second one is give out waste products so all living things give out waste products so we know that all living organisms works all the time so our body the body also performs several functions so as the body performs several functions our body produces waste and the waste need to be removed from the body why because it is harmful for example animals so animals excrete carbon dioxide and undigested food what about plants plant is a living thing it excrete oxygen during daytime and carbon dioxide during night time through stomata so that is the stomata means the tiny pores present on the leaves so all living things give out waste products because the waste is harmful for our body and it needs to be removed the next one is all living things respond to stimulus all living things respond to stimulus so let it be a plant or an animal or human being we react to the changes in the environment so all living things respond to stimulus and what is stimulus anything that causes a response that we call it as stimulus and all living things respond to stimulus so for example plant a plant that lean 
in the direction of light. Lean means move. So a plant lean in the direction of light. So what is the stimulus here? Stimulus means anything that causes response. So what is the stimulus here? The stimulus here is light. And the response here is lean, that is move. So a plant lean in the direction of light. So stimulus here is light and response here is lean. When you touch a hot object, what do you do? You suddenly pull away your hand from the hot object, right? When you touch something very hot, what do you do? You suddenly pull away your hand from the hot object. So what is the stimulus here? Stimulus means anything that causes a response. So what is the stimulus here? The stimulus here is heat. And what is the response here? Pull away. When you touch something hot, you suddenly pull away your hands. So the response here is pull away. So all living things respond to stimulus. Let it be a plant or an animal, it reacts to the changes in the environment. So all living things respond to stimuli. Coming to the next one, that is have a lifespan. So all living things have a lifespan. So what is the meaning of lifespan? A time period for which a living thing live, we call it as lifespan. So what is lifespan? A time period for which a living thing live, we call it as lifespan. For example, trees. So they have a lifespan. Trees live for many years. Let's take the example of herbs. You know what are herbs? Herbs are small plants with soft stem. You know what is the lifespan of a herb? It is very less. It is for very few months. Then once the lifespan is over, the living thing will die. So living things will die after the lifespan is over. And what is the meaning of lifespan? The time period for which a living thing live, we call it as lifespan. And all living things will have a lifespan. And once the lifespan is over, the living thing will die. So that is all living things have lifespan. Comparing it with non-living things. Do non-living things give out waste products? No, they do not give out waste products. Then the next one respond to stimuli. So we learned that all living things respond to stimuli. Then what about non-living things? Do they respond to stimuli? No. Right. Do they react to the changes in the environment? No. So they do not respond to stimuli. Then what about the third one? Do not have lifespan. Do a non-living thing have a time period? No. They doesn't have a, they does not have a lifespan. So these are some of the features of living things. So living things produce young ones, then they respond to stimuli, then we discussed that they give out waste products and we discussed living things have lifespan. So I hope the class was clear to you and we are done with the chapter, the first chapter living and non-living things and in this chapter we learned what is a living and what is a non-living thing and we learned of some of the features of living things. I hope the class was clear to you. You can go through the textbook, you can read it and understand the topic and understand the features of living things. So go through the exercises given in your textbook and in page number 11 Talking about a great scientist, Aristotle. Aristotle was a Greek scientist and he studied 500 types of animals and he grouped these animals into two. The first group is animals with blood and the second group is animals without blood. And again he divided animals with blood into two that is animals that give birth to young ones 
and animals that lay eggs. So I hope you all understood the topic. I hope it was clear to you. So we'll meet in the next class with a new chapter. Till then, thank you.